Look at all these postcards. What do you want us to know? Hang on, on to the loop. Four, three, two, one. I'm Jamie. So what's with the hat? Just Jamie, I always wear a hat. Yeah, but I've never seen you wear like a cowboy hat. Jamie, this is a loop show likes you. Mm -hmm. This show is completely unpredictable. We don't even know where we're gonna get on any of these cards. This show belongs to the loopsters. True. So you thought that you would match the tone by doing something unpredictable? Oh, the hat isn't the unpredictable part of the show. Oh, this good. is! Um, oh, wait a second, but we don't usually spin the wheel of cards before we read the postcards. Completely unpredictable. Spin that wheel! Okay. So this wheel has a ton of challenges that you've all suggested that we do. All right, let's see. It's pointing a dish one, pointing a dish one. Come on. <gasps> Melt the block of ice. What block of ice? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. All right. <gasps> oh. This block of ice. Very cool. All right. Oh, cool. That's a pun. Oh, uh, unintentional pun. Unpredictable. Woo. All right, let's let's melt it. This is solid. Are you trying to get whatever's inside to come out? Oh, there's something inside. Um, oh. what if we what if we just tell it like stories about something really hot, and then maybe it'll just melt? You know, that's not my best idea. Oh, let's tell them an embarrassing story, and maybe they'll blush. So uh, remember that one time when you were walking down the street and you thought someone was waving to you, so you waved back to them, and then someone behind you, uh, it was actually the person that they were waving to. Yeah, remember that? I don't know, I got nothing. All right, I'm gonna try giving it a big old hug. Oh, that's a great idea, a nice warm hug. It's cold, it's very cold. <laughs> All right, at the same time, one, two, okay. three. All right, I'm gonna put my armpit on it. That's a really good, here, let me try to help press it. Is it doing it? Is it melting yeah, fast? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Wait, I feel like your elbows don't have quite as good of like feelers as your hands do, because I could do this for a while. Is it weird? It's <laughs> ah, <that's> really cold. <laughs> I think this is gonna take forever. Ooh, I have an idea, but I need some time. Okay, well, let's cut to story time with Leslie. Perfect. Hey, Loop, it's story time. Okay, let me tell you a story about a time when I didn't let my good deeds shine through. So my parents were going out. They left me and my sisters home with our grandma. And before they left, they told us how to behave and specifically said, do not turn on the stove. Listen. We wanted to melt some chocolate. How are we supposed to melt chocolate if we couldn't touch the stove? Silly parents. So they leave. We pick a small pot. We pick the smallest burner. We put a solid chocolate cube in it, but nothing happened. We turn up the heat, but nothing happened. See, we were just gonna melt some chocolate, reenact the chocolate river scene from Willy Wonka, and then clean up the mess. We snap back to reality and <coughs> <coughs> there's a kitchen full of smoke and the mega smell of burnt chocolate. Quick, scrape the pot, run some water, open the door, bam. Our mom's little pot, ruined. The fork we tried to scrape it with, ruined. Our little grandma, ruined. I mean, confused and upset and very disappointed in us. We were way too young to know how to clean up all the mess, and so the evidence of our disrespect just sat there, waiting for our parents' return. We could have burned our house down. Our parents weren't so silly anymore. Okay, so I wanted to tell you that story because looking back, here's what I learned. One, respecting authority can protect you from trouble, and you better believe we got in trouble. Two, respecting authority reminds you that someone cares about you. See. My parents weren't just trying to keep us from chocolate. They were trying to make sure we had a house to live in. And three, respecting authority removes the choice of too many options. Which burner, which pot, what to cook? Like we were making all kinds of way too big choices for how young we were. And four, respecting authority helps you earn more trust. 
You think my grandma or my parents let us quote unquote cook anything else for a while? Not a chance. And listen, side note, we don't want to just blindly trust anyone who says they're an authority. We're talking specifically about trusted authorities. See, Jesus didn't say, disrespect your parents' authority and your life will be great. No, instead, this is what Jesus says. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Jesus reminds us that trusting authority helps other people recognize who God is. So what'd you learn? Where's an area of your life that you can practice being better at respecting authority? Okay, so speaking of things that you shouldn't try at home, we are keeping this electric hairdryer safely away from all the water. Yeah, and while we wait for this to melt, uh, let's read some postcards from Woo! some Loop students who want us to know something about them. Uh, let's start with uh, this one. This says, my name is Joshua and I was born in South Africa. Also, I love to sing. Very cool. Hello, Joshua. I love that you love to sing. What do you love to sing? Mm, me too. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Joshua, for writing in. Thank you, Joshua. Love that about you. <laughs> this says, once I threw up on my mom. Oh, no. Oh, I'm stinks. so sorry. Yeah. Tell your mom we said we're sorry and tell your tummy that we're sorry as well. Yeah. I've never thrown up on someone, to my knowledge at least. Well, I have thrown up a lot. And you know, the only good thing about throwing up is really just the, like search and find whenever you're looking at it. You're like, oh yeah, I remember you. I ate you yesterday. What else do we got? Uh, this one says, I like pot stickers, but you probably don't know what those are. Are you kidding me? I love pot stickers. They're delicious. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if you were planning on reading this or not, but it says to shave Jamie's head. <laughs> we'll consider it. You will? <laughs> No. Oh, this is from Landon. And Landon says, I can't feel heat. Whoa. Whoa. Man, if you couldn't feel ice or cold, that would be really helpful in this challenge so you could help us melt our ice. Okay, you can't feel heat. Does that mean that, like, if something is really, really hot, mm -hmm. that, like, it's not too hot to eat? So, like, if you mm. had, like, a freshly, like, microwaved, Hot pocket. Right. You could just bite straight into it and it not burn the roof of your mouth. That's like a superpower. Yeah, that's really cool. Wow. Way to go, Landon. Thank you for sharing yes. that with us. Speaking of heat, I think we need some of it. That's right. Come on. Come on, let's go. Come let's on. Go. Okay, so this is working, but not fast enough. Let's kick it up a notch. Oh boy. Let's light it up! Woo! Wow, that was fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so in my block of ice, I have... Let's see, let's see. Come on. It... <gasps> Whoa. What is... Well, that looks cool. Is it a t-shirt? Oh, my. More ice. Wait. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, is this... Okay. Uh, okay, it looks like it's a frozen t-shirt. We're gonna let this fall and see what it looks like. That's awesome. Yay! What'd you get yours? Okay, let's see. All right. Let's see what's in here. Let's see what's in here. Okay, uh, let's see if I can, oh, I can open mine. <laughs> I think I can. What is this? No way. Is it a sloth? It looks like it is a giant inflatable something. Horse? Is it a camel? <laughs> is it a llama? Is it an alpaca? Is it a horse? Is it a giraffe? It's a giant inflatable horse, JV. Woohoo! It's a Clydesdale. Wow. Well, that's really cool. Is this a hint? Is this a hint? Are we getting a horse? <laughs> a loop show horse! Yay! <laughs> I promise to feed it and keep it away from fires. That was a really fun challenge. Nice. Now, we learned a lot about you loopsters, and we learned how to melt frozen water. Mm -hmm, true, true. Now, let's answer one of your big questions. Ooh, here it comes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, this person asks, how do you forgive yourself after a bad decision? Mm, yeah, I struggle with that a lot. 
Let's get some answers. We've all been there. We've said the wrong thing, done the wrong thing, and all of a sudden, the shame comes in. Our cheeks flush, our mind is racing, our stomach hurts, and we know that we've made a mistake. Every one of our bad decisions is an opportunity for shame to come in, but you don't have to let it. You see, shame wants to partner with your insecurities and tell you that you didn't make a bad decision, that you are bad, but that's not the truth. You see, shame doesn't know you. Shame doesn't know you like God knows you and he loves you. In scripture, we see Peter. Peter three times denies Jesus, not just makes a mistake, not misspeaks. Three times he betrays and denies Jesus. And when he's face to face with Jesus, Jesus forgives him and not just forgives him, forgives him and invites him to lead. Scripture tells us that Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church upon Peter, upon a man who has made mistakes. So when shame wants to tell you that you're not worth it, remember that God loves you. When shame wants to tell you that you've made too many mistakes, remember that you are forgiven by God. When shame wants to tell you that nobody would love the real you, if they knew that they wouldn't want anything to do with you. Remember, you are loved by the creator of the universe. Shame doesn't know you like God knows you. God sees you, he forgives you, he welcomes you, and he loves you. All right, this is Jamie's fully <laughs> inflated uh, horse. What's your horse's horse. name? Turtle. Oh, wonderful. I love it. <laughs> and this is my fully thawed shirt. Yay. Just a grandma who loves wolves. That's the best shirt ever. Oh my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> this is incredible. I love Turtle it. Turtle agrees. It's really, really good. <laughs> oh man. We want to hear from you. Remember, if we get mail from all 50 states, Jamie will put a worm on her face. And Ricky will eat a pickle. We just want to know what you want us to do. Leave us a comment. Or send us some mail. Some mail. That's right. Here's what you need to do. Get about 58 rocks. No more, no less. Mm -hmm. Put them on some sand. If you don't have sand, find some. It's very easy to make. All you need is shattered glass. So you arrange the rocks on top of there into messages that will signal the post people to get you some stationery. And once you get that stationery, you can write on it, put it in the mail, and then the mail people will know what to do from there. But you need the 58 rocks. Mm -hmm. Don't mail those. You just need that to signal the people to get you the stationery. Turtle said to use the Pony Express. It's much yeah. faster. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> Thank you for the suggestion. We made it easy for you. There is an address in the description below. Mm -hmm. And when things get unpredictable, don't forget to enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. So I feel like people in Alaska could give us some really good tips on how to melt ice. That's right. So if you're watching from Alaska, send us a mail. The address is in the description below. Mm -hmm. And for all you other cool cats out there, leave us a comment telling us what your favorite way to melt stuff is. The address is in the description below. Melt, 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 melt.